Oh, dude. All right, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get him or her out, but. Oh. And it's really tight and humid in here. And warm. Okay, it's wedged in here pretty good. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's new series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go Beyond the Glass. This is the reality that a lot of shows might have cleaned up before filming or shot around, but I kind of want to share this because if anyone watching doesn't think littering is a big deal, well, look, enough of it builds up and it does. It's a big, gross, dirty, nasty deal. And there's a lot of guppies in the water here. They are not native. They're definitely South American guppies. There's also Placosmus in here which is your sucker fish. You get those at pet stores all the time. It's sad because this could have been a much prettier scene than it is. And I wish it was, but it's not. Check these tracks out. Snakes have been foraging on the surface. I'm guessing these either belong to one of two snakes. Either it's gonna be our anhydrous or our homolopsis, because those are the two that occur here commonly. Something just moved, man. There it is. Yep, got it. It's biting me. Okay. That was worth a little mud on the hand. This is a baby homolopsis, otherwise known as the puff-faced water snake. Now these fully aquatic snakes aren't actually coolabirds anymore, but they're now homolopsidae whole family just for them. The common name for the Homolopsidae family is the mud snakes. Pretty appropriate. Not a lot of people work with these, strangely enough. Even though there are leucistics and albinos that occasionally have been made available, there's not a lot of breeders of these snakes. They are fully aquatic snakes, so it kind of is a weird section of uh, the reptile keeping hobby in that you have to know your aquatics and your herps to keep these successfully. Unfortunately, there's a lot of pressure on the wild populations. They're heavily hunted for their skin and their meat. In Cambodia, your cobra wine was often actually these guys, not cobras at all. Remember how I was saying there's uh, two species that we probably see in this pond? Well, this is the other one, Anhydrus anhydrus, or the rainbow water snake. These little water snakes are also fully aquatic and in the same mud snake family as the puff-faced water snake. They are just awesomely adapted to mud, and they are fish eaters. Unfortunately, it's all these mud snakes that fishermen catch his bycatch and decide, hey, I could sell that too. But they're not carefully monitored, so we don't know how many of these we're losing every year and if they're becoming endangered or not. I'm going to let him go back to his muddy ways. All right, buddy. The information I'm gonna share with you applies to both the puff-faced water snake and the rainbow water snake. These guys require very clean water. Even the slightest fouling can lead to bacterial or fungal issues. Both snakes rarely leave the water, but it's still important for them to have a good area to dry off in. Many aquatic snakes have fast metabolisms and should have live food readily available. Oh, dude. All right, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get him or her out, but... Ugh. And it's really tight and humid in here. And warm. Okay, it's wedged in here pretty good.
I cannot believe this actually works. Okay. Sorry, buddy. So this is world's longest snake, the reticulated python. Not the biggest example, but man, there's definitely a difference in the behavior between a wild caught retic and a captive bred. And you know, that's just another kudos to captive breeding because the wild cots can be a bit less friendly. So let's talk about the retic. It is the world's longest snake. That means unless you have a lot of experience and a good sized budget for rabbits and excess square footage for a really big cage. This is not the ideal snake for many, many reptile keepers. I mean, I'd guesstimate we're talking about the 10 foot tunnel and it's a small one. So this small snake shows a 10 foot deep hole that a human could crawl into. Cool snake, man. All right, well, I'm gonna let this thing go and uh, I'm gonna take some measurements both in the hole and outside of the hole. Oh. I'm kind of glad that's the last time I have to do that. Okay, so our outside humidity is at 90%. So it's still pretty humid out here, but in contrast in there, it feels pretty dry. It's a good home for the snake, but I don't think I'll be visiting again. I've got to go do laundry now. Covered in poop, covered in mud. Mm. It's a dirty job. <laughs> 